Hello and welcome to Experience Daily Harvest. This is the last part of our Design Your Best Life series and it is such a pleasure to be here and talk to you about this. This is one of my favorite conversations and honestly this is this is um this is profound. This 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 idea is so very simple and yet should you choose to really make it a part of your life it is it is something transformative healing and it can be the thing that today you could most dramatically shift to see the world and experience the world in a different way and out of that that new experience things that were always turned off not coming to you not alive not precious nor present the things that were never there before be it love connection abundance this is where it starts to enter. And it is, don't, please enter this space today, assuming that you are not doing this. Assume that you are only doing it 2% as much as you could be. Um, this is how I look at this. I look at this, even though I've been studying this for decades, this conversation can always be expanded into new realms of your life. So it's simple on the surface. It will sound like you've heard it before. And I invite you to lower your, just sink deeper into your heart and into your own presence. So every morning on my way to the office, I do a guided exercise to help me find guidance, similar to what you found was in the is, was in the last um, the last section of this video where you drop inside and you ask for guidance and you see what's in the way of that guidance and you and you take action and the thing I look for what I ask for every day is for my own willingness to see what I haven't seen before to allow my ears and my eyes to hear that which I've heard before in a fresh way. So that's how I invite you to experience uh, this, this time together today. So experiencing a daily harvest is really an invitation for you to bring more and more of a higher perspective, a, the perspective of your best self, um, of a self that sees through the lens of love and light and hope more and more. And so every moment is an opportunity to call forth guidance and act from it. Every moment is an opportunity to, I, I, I literally try to imagine, especially I, I listen to myself and I feel when I start to get stressed or anxious or overwhelmed or I'm just at a low state of energy and I ask for guidance to, I ask for light to come into my mind and to color my perspective. I, I ask for light to fill my thoughts so I can see it in a new way. And so every moment is an invitation to listen to one's higher wisdom and follow its instructions. That's one of the ways I ask for it. Every step aligned with your best self, every time you speak from that place, every time you think from that place every time you walk down the hall and connect from with somebody from that place i actually believe that when you're driving down the street and you're connected to your higher self and you send energy i sometimes will drive and send energy positive energy out to the people that are driving by and so every step that you make that's aligned with this best self puts you in a state of harmony with your deeper purpose, whatever that is. And it connects you with that experience of infinite love that lives all around you. And it taps you into feeling empowered in your life. And most of us spend a lot of time in our lives feeling like a victim. And I know everybody says, no, I'm not a victim. I would never be a victim. I, I challenge you, as I challenge myself, to look for, really scour the pan 
to find places where you are being a victim because the sooner you find them, the sooner you can let them go because wherever you're a victim, you're, you believe that you don't have power. You believe that there isn't miracles. You believe there isn't light. You believe that, that things are not the way you want them. And it just doesn't feel good. Like the only thing that really matters here is that you learn how to focus on how you make this internal world a more beautiful and tolerable and loving place to live. So every time you put your best self thinking into your path and into your doing, things start to happen. Every time we lean into higher guidance and act from it, we align with the forces beyond our human nature and we align with our human capacities for will and discipline and effort. So we bring them together. We bring them together and we allow for something bigger than ourselves to enter. And it's like putting wind in our sails. So we partner with the universal force of energy that exists all around us and sits dormant. It's just there. It's like the sun, right? It's always there. This, this, this universal infinite light with answers, with feelings of love and harmony are always there for us, just like the sun's always there. Sometimes there's clouds in the sky, just like sometimes we don't feel connected to it, but it's always there. The more we ask for connection to that guidance, the more we dissipate the clouds and feel the warmth of that sun on our faces and in our lives. So this universal energy wants to partner with us. It's sitting there laughing, not laughing in a in a um, patronizing way. It's, it's happy to be here with us. It wants to be here with us. It's, it's literally take, trying to reach out and take your hand. And we're just oblivious. We're stuck, right? So this experiencing a daily harvest is all about becoming more privy to it, more aware of the the, the universe wanting to shake our hands, lead us in a direction, help us along, become the universal sails in our winds. And uh, when you heed that calling, magical things start to happen, truly magical things. Uh, so you want to focus. So, so much of, um, so much of what, what we, one of our biggest powers is focus, where we focus our energy, how we focus our thoughts. So if you focus your attention to see the good things springing up all, all around you, suddenly your eyes are conditioned to see magic everywhere. So the first piece of this is to actively look for miracles. And unfortunately, most of us have this very, 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 um, I think, uh, impossible definition for miracles. We have this idea that miracles have to be, you know, Partings of parting of seas and things that are you know boats that are carried by you know, the great big boats with all the all the animals in it and, and, and you know that live through forty days and forty nights of rain and it, it, it isn't it isn't really that I mean miracles are moments where you have a shift in your perspective that elevates your energy and allows you to see things in a different way. We live in a world of absolute abundance, love, harmony, and we are just not able to see it. So around us all the time, I would assert, is the presence of nothing but good. And it's our job as humans to recognize and see the miracles of every moment. And the more we do that, of course, the better our personal experience is, the better we feel, but it also shifts and changes all the energy of others around us. So a miracle is anything that uplifts or elevates you, right? It doesn't have to be a big deal. It can be the sun, the sight of sun, sunshine beaming through a cloud. It can be an unexpected encounter with a friend on the street. It can be an opportunity or an invitation to do something that lights you up. It can be simply focusing on something that's causing you a lot of pain and distress and, and finding in your own heart and mind, asking for guidance on how to see it 
in a different way. It's that's a miracle. That's transformation. That's actually that's alchemy, right? That's turning base metals into gold. That's that's taking some situation and elevating it, healing it, relieving it of its pain, its fear. All right. So it brings you from a state of low or moderate energy to a state of higher energy. So that's really all a miracle is. It's you, and you feel it with your emotions. That's how you feel when you're in a lower state. You have lower vibration. You have lower energy. At any moment, you could invite more energy in and elevate your energy. At any moment, I would assert. So this is caused by an infusion of higher energy from the infinite pool of love that's all around you. All you have to do is ask for it. Is there? It's there all the time, and it's just a waiting, waiting for you. It's just a waiting for your choice to, to, to tap into it, to say, I, I, I give you permission to come in. I ask you to come into my eyes. I ask you to come into my head. I want you to tell me what to think. If I had light in my mind, if I had love in my head, what would I think? What would I see? What would I feel? What would I think? The second thing in this is to really be focused on celebration. Celebration is again, one of these things that we can tap into at any time. I really believe that we, ha we are in life, we either are the kind of person who celebrates everything or doesn't. Everything is a miracle or nothing is. For your own well-being, try peering into the perspective that everything, everything is worth celebration. And, and as uh, there's, a, there's a, a practice of loving kindness that uh, it's a meditation that um, a lot of Buddhists do where they start with focusing on, you know, focusing on uh, loving kindness or celebration or seeing the gift of something that's, that's, that's dear to them, like a child they love or the mother, their mother or their person. And then, then they start to look at, okay, well, now can you extend celebration and love to a person who you don't know, who's just on the street. And now can you expand it out to somebody that actually you do know and you don't like, right? And now what if you could expand the possibility of celebration and love and blessings and the wish for harmony out to something terrible that in your mind, something that your mind perceives as ter terrible, like poverty or, um, you know, genocide, something that we in our human minds really see as being very negative. What if you could send blessings? Even what if there could be, you have to reach deep and hard, and you're probably not even understanding what I'm saying, but to be able to find so much love in your heart that there could be a place for celebration for any of it. And so celebrating your harvest can be very small, and it starts with very simple practices. Every day create a reason to celebrate who you are, and what are your sources of celebration? So it could be something, anytime you can look back. You can always say, today you're having a bad day. Okay, look into the past. What are things you've done in the past? What are things that you were, you were courageous, where you worked hard, where you did the right thing, where you had fun, where you had a positive experience? So maybe you, you went to college. Maybe you didn't finish high school and you went back and got your GED. Maybe you got a certification. Maybe you left an unhealthy relationship, or maybe you left a relationship that wasn't even unhealthy, but it was no longer its time. Maybe you, you left a relationship that, that you feel good, that you did that. Maybe you wrote a, wrote a song, painted a picture. Maybe you knitted a scarf, even if it didn't turn out perfect, you did it. Maybe you saved money for a house. Maybe you bought a house. Maybe you bought and sold a house. Right? Maybe you lost three pounds. So really, it could be anything, right? It's and it's just a matter of fix, fixing your mind on the focus of, of, of celebration. It could be something that happened today. It could be a smile from a stranger. It could be that you drank eight of a, a glasses of water. It could be that you prepared and ate a healthy meal. It could be that you chose to wake up, wake up five minutes early so that you could not be running around quite so frantically. It could be that you took an energetic walk. It could be anything. So one of your qualities, it could be, okay, today I'm gonna to focus on the love that's in your heart. I'm gonna celebrate 
all the ways that I have love in my heart. I'm going to celebrate my sensitivity, my gift of sensitivity that I feel all kinds of things and that I intuit other people's needs from that sensitivity. I'm going to celebrate my generosity or I'm going to celebrate my openness, whatever it is for you. You can celebrate something that's in your life that you can cherish, right? We all have so many things we can cherish. We can we can cherish the fact that our we turn on lights and light, you know, we turn a switch and lights turn on. We can celebrate the fact that we turn a, a spigot and water comes out. We can celebrate uh, the fact that we when that we have a home, right, that, or, or an apartment, we have a, a bed to sleep in. We can celebrate all of that. You can you can celebrate the people in your life. You can celebrate your mother, right? Who can't celebrate their mother or their father or your job or your patient? Please celebrate your patients. Please, I beg you, please celebrate your patients. Please see their miracles. Celebrate your patients. Celebrate your dog right? Celebrate your, the weather today. I celebrate the weather when it's bad, when it's good. It doesn't matter. It's part of this beautiful thing we live in. This earth. We have a beautiful earth, home, fresh laundry. Whether I did it or, or my husband did or, or whoever did it, I'm grateful to open my drawer and go, gee, there's clean underwear. Pretty good. Pretty good thing to celebrate. How about a hot bowl of soup, right? Whatever it is, celebration is all around. So I invite you to embark on 30 days or the rest of your life, but at least 30 days for every day you just take around with you a little notebook, okay? It doesn't have to be a big notebook, be a little notebook. I don't have a little notebook right in front of me, but a little notebook, right? That you can put in your bag and track your miracles. I, I challenge you to write at least five down. Once you get into the hang of it, you'll be able to write 50. Acknowledge process. Write down at least five things that you would like to celebrate about yourself. Actions you're taking or progress you're making. So miracles in the world that you see that, right, when you think about them, elevate your energy. Acknowledging or celebration, five things about you and the progress you're making towards whatever it is you're trying to be. And celebrate. Every day choose an action of celebration to take within 24 hours. So action is how we take thinking uh, from the divine or from your higher self or your best self and bringing it into the physical form. So that play, we're in a physical world having this experience inside of ourselves and we bring it into the world is by taking action. So in the physical world. So don't just think about what you would do, actually do it. So maybe it's as simple as lighting a candle. It could be a momentous, uh, you know, something simple like giving yourself a bath. Or, you know, it could be planning a trip. It could be anything. But every day, take some kind of celebratory action. It just plants into your life magic. All right. I hope this has been inspiring and helpful to you. I hope this helps you to see how you can design your, your very best life that's architected by your best self. And I look forward to the next phases of our future journey together. And uh, in the meantime, go make the world a better place. <laughs>